Hello everyone, my name is Zohre Gorbani. I am a PhD candidate at Western University working on my geochemical prospecting of gold at the Yellow Knight Gain Istanbul. This is a joint project between Western University and Gold Tour Resource Corporation and funded by MITEX. Target development at the Yellow Knife City Gold Project uses a multi-stage approach to find mineral occurrences. As can be seen, many targets in the North Belt are in the discovery and expansion stages, while targets in the East Belt and South Belt are still in the early stages of exploration, including geophysical, geochemical, and geological assessment. In this project, we applied advanced statistical analysis to weigh geochemical samples in order to test and define the geochemical response in black spruce and other vegetation that is associated with mineralization and bedrock composition. This work has been applied to two separate biogeochemical surveys that were conducted in 2015 and 2017. In 2015, a short biogeochemical survey was conducted over the Kirstarum and Barney shears, which are two important gold bearing shears in the northern portion of property. 625 needle samples were collected from four vegetation types, including juniper, black spruce, alder, and Labrador tea, to find the best vegetation medium for biogeochemical surveys based on their ability to accumulate high gold concentration usefulness in wider surveys. The range of gold concentrations in the collected needle samples varies between 0.4 to 147 ppb, which is 10 times more than background levels, typically ranging from 5 to 10 ppb. All biogeochemical data were validated and analyzed using IOGAS software. Positive outcomes of this survey resulted in the wider survey in 2017. The left image is a map of gold distribution with increasing gold concentrations shown in the warmer colors. The right image is a map of the same area showing the distribution of various vegetation types corresponding to the gold values on the left. Black spruce samples shown in red have the highest gold concentration, while juniper needles in blue accumulated the lowest gold content. These are scattered plots of gold versus various pathfinder elements. Here you can see the positive correlation between gold and arsenic, antimony, selenium, thallium, silver, and bismuth. Black spruce samples shown as red dots have the highest gold concentration as well as other pathfinder elements in comparison to the other vegetation media. The plot of gold versus silver shows a noticeable gap in the middle of the plot, indicating a significant difference in silver uptake between black spruce and other vegetation media. These scatter plots show correlation between gold and elements that are typically associated with iron in mafit rocks, including cobalt, chromium, nickel, manganese, and mag magnesium. We interpret the strong positive correlation of these elements with gold as evidence of a strong relationship between the mineralization lithology and the mineral and the vegetation above. Note that all of the all of these elements are highly enriched in black spruce, while juniper samples have lower overall concentrations. Magnesium is concentrated in the alder samples more than the other vegetation media. In order to test the usefulness of the biogeochemical approach to exploration at the Yellow Knife City Gold Project, beyond simple scatter plots, we applied advanced statistical analysis. Here, we showed the results of the principal component analysis using IOGAS software. Principal component analysis, or PCA, is a multivariate statistical approach that is particularly useful when there are large data sets with a high degree of correlation between the elements. What PCA does is to reduce the dimensionality and increase the interpretability along with minimizing the information loss. 
In this way, we can use fewer components to describe the whole variability of the dataset. Specifically, we applied robust RQO mode analysis. The robust analysis was applied because the data were not normally distributed and included outliers. RQ mode also was used to assess both elements R and the samples Q simultaneously and at the same scale. In this project, PCA was applied to identify the main factors controlling the occurrence and distribution of gold and its interrelationship with other elements with respect to the lithology. A small angles between vectors seen in the plot signified the similar chemical association between gold and its pathfinder elements. These elements are also grouped with iron-associated elements, including indicating that the geological or lithological factor is the controlling factor in distribution of these elements. The proximity of these elements and the majority of black spruce samples shown as dead rods the red dots confirms its ability to accumulate these elements and make it the suitable vegetation media for biogeochemical surveys in the region. In 2017, a wider survey was conducted over different targets across the North Belt and East Belt using the background information obtained from the 2015 survey. In this survey, 2,788 black spruce samples were collected. Only 700 of these samples were validated due, validated due to the very low gold concentration. The aims of this survey were to first define targets that are the extension of the previous mining area, and second, introduce new prospective zones using the biogeochemical and statistical approaches. For these purposes, gold anomalies were prioritized according to the exchange of the gold response. For example, with, uh, for example, samples with gold content over 99 or 98 percentile threshold and their pathfinder elements signature. This is a summary table of the results of our advanced statistical analysis. Gold is accompanied with different sets of gold pathfinders in each target, and this varies depending on the bedrock composition. Where the dominant bedrock composition is composed of mafic, ultramafic rocks, strong signatures of arsenic, antimony, selenium, and lead were observed. In areas overlying gold enriched bearwash formation metasediments, the biogeochemical response is associated with elevated selenium, mercury, copper, and cadmium. In the contact zone between intrusive bodies and metavolcanic and or metasedimentary packages, gold is significantly associated with silver, thallium, and bismuth in the overlying vegetation. In the following slides, I will describe the analysis and interpretation of biogeochemical data from the Ryan Lake target from North Belt and Duck Lake and Ptarmigan targets from East Belt. These targets all have high gold content in more than 10 contiguous samples. At the Ryan Lake target, two contiguous anomalous gold values are identified. First one in the south of the North Belt, which is the north extension of the giant Campbell shear zone. The second one peripheral and over, over shears 17, 18, and 20, which are related to the late fossil intermediate intrusion through the Chan formation mafic volcanics, and in association with mafic ducts that cut Chan formation mafic volcanics. Here we have a series of heat maps where warmer colors indicate higher concentrations and cool colors represent lower concentrations. These maps represent the same area shown in the previous slide. The distribution pattern of gold was substantiated by its pathfinder elements to first avoid reporting on real anomalies and second to find the most suitable pathfinders in each target. In proximity, in proximity to the giant Campbell shear, a strong signature of arsenic, antimony, and lead 
and a slightly less strong signature of selenium, mercury, bismuth, cadmium, and copper is observed. A strong association of arsenic and antimony with gold are likely related to the presence of arsenopyrite and possibly stibinate with gold mineralization. However, the gold pathfinder signatures in the biogeochemical samples is different near the shear 17, 18, and 20 locality, where chain formation metavolcanics were intruded by the late, fel late felsic bodies and mafic dikes. In this region, gold is notably associated with thallium, bismuth, and silver, and to a lesser extent to, um, an, to antimony, copper, and arsenic. The strongest anomaly in the 2017 survey area consists of more than 10 black spruce samples with the gold values in the 99th percentile, hosted adjacent to the ptarmigan area within Burwash Formation sandstones. Gold anomalies in the ptarmigan area are coincident with the all pathfinder elements anomalies, specifically arsenic, selenium, bismuth, silver, lead, copper, and cadmium. At Duck Lake South, several gold anomalies in black spruce were detected that are located in the contact zone of the felsic intrusion and bare wash metasediments. While at Duck Lake North, anomalous gold values in black spruce are associated with mafic metavolcanics. Similar anomalies have also been recorded in rock samples, which confirms the plant substrate relationship. A follow up by geochemical survey in the northwest southeast direction that connects Duck Lake North and South is suggested to test a possible link between these targets. At the Duck Lake target, there is an gold enriched zone at the contact between the felsic intrusion and the burr wash metasediments. This zone also shows elevated selenium and mercury values in black spruce samples. In proximity to the faulted zone and mafic rocks, we see elevated arsenic, selenium, and silver signatures. In conclusion, this study demonstrate, demonstrates the robustness of the biogeochemical method in reproducing zones of relative gold enrichment at Yellow Knife City Gold Project, even where the gold values are very low. Black spruce in the pre, is the preferred sample medium because it has a demonstrated capability to indicate plant substrate relationship by accumulating higher concentrations of metal, gold, and its pathfinder elements. Gold targets at Yellow Knife City Gold Project have, have different sets of pathfinder signatures depends on the bedrock composition and mineralization style. Gold and its associated pathfinder maps revealed that zones of gold enrichment are in association with the shear zones within mafic ultramafic formations with signatures of arsenic, antimony, selenium, and lead. Also, it can be in proximity of late felsic bodies intruded to the mafic volcanics or sedimentary rocks with signatures of silver, thallium, and bismuth or it can be a long faulted contact between felsic intermediate metavolcanic and sulfidic metasediments, accompanied with selenium, mercury, copper, and cadmium signatures. A priority for follow-up surveys should be given to the Ptarmigan, Ryan Lake, and South Lake um, area with significant contiguous gold anomalies and a strong, a strong pathfinder signatures. Thanks for your attention. Please let me know if you have any questions.